We said several times that the theremin generates sound using the heterodyne principle. We take two RF signals at close frequencies and then we mix them together so that they multiply with each other and we get as a result a new signal that contains both the frequencies of the original signals in the form of their sum and their difference. If the two original signals had frequencies very close to each other, the sum would be an RF signal with a higher frequency, but the difference could be in the audio range and we could actually hear it if we inputted it to an audio amplifier. Well, finally today we are going to see just that. We will build the mixer of the theremin and we will input to it the signals coming from the pitch reference oscillator and from the pitch variable oscillator. Let's see in practice what will happen. Hi there, I am Carlo Carrano and this is Electronics Engineering Made Easy. The mixer is a theremin stage that combines together the signals from the pitch variable oscillator and from the pitch reference oscillator to create an audio signal that is essentially the sound that the theremin produces. The two input signals are mixed together at the base of transistor Q1, which they reach passing through capacitor C4 and C8, used to decouple the mixer from the oscillator's output. If we didn't do that, we would have altered the depolarization of the transistors in the oscillators, forcing them to change their frequency. Transistor Q1 is polarized in the non-linear zone of its characteristics by the resistors R2, R3, R5 and R6. We do so because we need a non-linear device to combine together the two input signals. In fact, if we had used a linear device, the combination of the two signals would have been their sum. However, we want the two to be multiplied by each other. It is the product, in fact, that contains the sum and the difference of their frequencies. This product signal is extracted on the collector of transistor Q1 and then passed through a low-pass filter with a steep attenuation curve composed by the resistors R4, R7, R8 and R9 and the capacitors C2, C3, C5, C6 and C7. This low-pass filter practically removes the whole high-frequency component of the signal present on transistor Q1 collector, and that leaves only whatever is available in the audio range. This is the signal that we want to use as the audio output of the theremin, once we give it some dynamic, passing it through a voltage-controlled amplifier, which we'll examine in another episode. Let's now work on the actual circuit mounted on a breadboard, so we can take some measurement with the oscilloscope to verify its correct behavior. Let's take a look at the circuit I just built. So, we have here the transistor Q1. On its emitter there is the resistor R6 that goes to ground. And this is the one. So this is the, the resistor R6. Then on the base we have a resistor R5 that goes to ground again. And this is the one. And then there is the resistor R2 that goes toward R1. Here it is. And R1 goes to the positive rail. Then we have still on the base two capacitors that are this and this that are connected to these points so we can inject the signals from the theremin oscillators and then we have on the collector the resistor R3 which is right here which is in parallel on the capacitor C2 which is this one which goes to the resistor R1 like it did the R2 which is still over here then on the collector we have uh, resistors R4, R7, R8 and R9. You can see over here 1, 2, 3 and 4. And uh, corresponding capacitors between these points and the ground. And here are the capacitors after the first 
resistor. There is a capacitor that goes to ground, another one at this resistor, capacitor that goes to one, another one here, and another one here. Then finally, I have uh, four points here where we can uh, retrieve the signal, and these four points correspond to these four points here. This is the actual output of the mixer, but I put these all these points over here too to show you how the signal is adjusted step by step until we clean up entirely the high frequency. So this is basically it. Let's now connect it to the theremin and let's see how it works. So here we have the theremin now and the breadboard with the mixer mounted into it. I attached it already to the theremin four cables and basically this is the wire that goes to the plus 12 volts supply and this is the ground which we will use to power up the mixer directly so let me bring these cables over here the ground goes here the negative rail and the plus 12 goes to the positive rail over here and these two cables now they come this one from the pitch reference oscillator on the left and this one goes to the pitch variable oscillator. So before doing anything else, let me power up the theremin and let me show you the independent signals that we have over here. So let me grab the oscilloscope, let me put the probe over here. And now let's take a look. Uh, let me auto set the oscilloscope. And here is the signal, which is basically a square wave. Uh, and this kind here, hmm, interesting. Oh yeah, I didn't put the ground. There we go. Okay. So now that I have connected the ground, let's take a better look. Let me remove the DC component from the signal. Amplify it a little bit, expand here, and here is the sine wave of the pitch reference oscillator. And now let me show you the other one, the one coming from the pitch variable oscillator. Here we go, and this is the other wave. So you see that they are two signs, wave, each one with its own frequency. Now let's connect them together to the circuit, and in particular to the two capacitors that are at the base of the transistor. Now that they are connected together, we can take a look at the signal directly on the base of the transistor. And we can do that connecting the oscilloscope on this side of this capacitor. Let's see if I can do it without damaging anything. There we go. So now you can see that there is a bunch of stuff over here. This is uh, the input of the transistor on the base. So we have uh, the signal coming from the pitch reference oscillator. We have the signal coming from the pitch variable oscillator we have the sum of the two signals and you can see all these frequencies here all these sine waves that move around which basically they have they are not exactly in sync with the two frequencies but let's see now what happened to the collector on the collector of the transistor we should have those same signals in particular the one from the pitch reference oscillator and the one from the pitch variable oscillator multiply together so we should be able to see the product how is it? So I'm gonna connect the oscilloscope right over here. Actually, this is already after the first filter and I want to connect instead directly on the collector. So I will go right over here, which is basically like the collector. And let's see what we have on the oscilloscope. Look at that. This is a big mess of signals, but you can basically see that there is a pattern. You can clearly see that there is some kind of enveloping sine wave 
although I cannot easily see in, but there is a, an enveloping sine wave which is at low frequency, and this is the one that is at the difference between the two uh, oscillators. And then there is a, a big amount of high frequency on top of that, and that is the sum of the two frequencies of the two oscillators. So now we, can, we will go through all the filter stages and we will see how the high frequency will be removed a little bit at a time. So let's move to the first stage, which is here. And look at that. The signal is already much more clean. You see, you can see still the, the wave at low frequency, enveloping everything and then the high frequency that still moves uh, on top of it. If we move to the next stage of the filter, you can see how the signal has been cleaned up further, and now the high frequency is even less than it was before. Here we go. And then we move to the next stage, where the signal should be even more clean. See, there are just a few spikes here and there of high frequency, but now we can clearly see the sine wave at the low frequency, which is close to the audio range. And then finally, in the last stage, that's as clean as possible signal, signal that we can obtain. And there it is. So basically, we have seen how the mixer works and uh, we tested it, so it works just fine. So we can now actually remove all the components from the breadboard and attach them to the control terminal board. And then once we have uh, assembled all the components on this board, we will test it once more to make sure that we still see this kind of signal. Ok, now that the circuit has been built, I just need to verify that it still works as expected. No further testing will be necessary since we already did on the prototype. First of all, you can see here there is this new transistor mounted over here with all the components around, and here is the filter that provides the audio frequency, and the output will be on this test point. So, without any further ado, Let's connect the oscilloscope, power up the circuit, and see how this works. So 
so basically we just need to touch on this pin to verify that we have an audio wave on the output okay so as you can see this is exactly the audio wave that we saw before when the circuit was mounted on the breadboard so everything is done the circuit is complete now we need just to move on to the next piece of the theremin in this video we have seen how the mixer stage of the theremin works both from the theoretical standpoint and the practical one where we examine the input and output waves at the oscilloscope we have seen that we are capable of extracting a signal that has a frequency in proximity of the audio range later on in another video we will fine-tune the two pitch oscillators so that the output frequency is exactly in the audio range in future videos we will also talk about the remaining stages of the theremin. See you soon and happy experiments!